Hello, and welcome to an introduction to Grails 3.0. I'm your host, Dan Vega, and today we're going to look at the newest release of the Grails framework. First, a couple things about me. Uh, my website is here at therealdanvega.com. Please go ahead and visit it and check it out if you like. Also, if you can support this channel, please click the subscribe button below. That would really help me out. Uh, and I appreciate it very much. So a quick what to expect from these screencasts. Um, what I want to do is dive into, uh, as I said before, Grails 3.0 was just released. Today's April 1st, 2015. Uh, it was just released two days ago. And so what I want to do is dive into kind of the new stuff that's in Grails 3.0 as well as hopefully turn this into more of a classroom. And, and once we get done looking through a lot of the new features of 3.0, we'll kind of build this into just a kind of Grails class, if you will. So that's my hope. Uh, in this first video, again, this is going to be a basic introduction. And I hope to get the next one out shortly, uh, which will go into kind of installing 3.0 and taking a look around under the hood. So first of all, um, the reason that this came out a couple days ago is if you didn't know this, um, Pivotal dropped support for Grails and their last day was actually yesterday. Um, so first off, I want to say congrats to Graham and the whole team uh, for, for getting this out, you know, under a tight pressure probably, you know, they, they, they had to get this out um, quickly. So just want to say congrats to, to them and the whole team um, and thank you for all your hard work. So um, I'll link to all of these documents below. Um, so if you look below, there's some links. Um, but this is the first one. This is Graham's blog post about the, the 3.0 release and kind of the road ahead and, and what's in store for him and the team. So I encourage you to read this and kind of read through the comments. They're all very encouraging. Uh, next, we're going to look at the Grails Framework website. So that's at grails.org. Uh, so if you're new to Grails, this is a good place to start. Um, so you can kind of look around and get an idea of what Grails is. Hopefully, if you're here, you, you kind of know what you have a little bit of an idea of what Grails is. But if you don't, and it's basically a Groovy-based web application framework for the JVM, uh, everything's built on top of Groovy. Um, so first, I would I would encourage you to take a, take a look around the website. There's a lot of great information here. Next, we're going to jump into the documentation. So. If you need to look at uh, older versions of the documentation, you can come down here and find the version that you're on. Um, but for us, we're looking at the latest, which is 3.0. So we're just going to jump right into the single page document. So the first thing we want to do is jump into what's new. So this kind of covers what's new in Grails 3.0. So we're going to look at these at a high level right now. And a lot of these are what we're going to jump into in later screencasts. So first off, Grails 3.0 comes with Groovy 2.4. And this, again, was the Groovy team just getting this out a couple weeks ago. Um, so it's nice to see Grails 3.0 up to date with Groovy 2.4. Um, the next really big thing is uh, Grails is kind of built on Spring 4.1 and Spring Boot 1.2. So if you're not sure what Spring Boot is, um, I'll, again, I'll drop a link for this below. But Spring Boot is basically... Um, an opinion, opinionated view of building spring ready applications. So if you've ever built spring apps, um, they're pretty, pretty great framework, but it's a lot of, a lot of it's tedious. And it's the same thing that Grails does with the convention over configuration. It makes a lot of things easier um, and less mundane and, and less verbose. Um, so, so Spring Boot kind of picked up on that and, and saw a, a space for that as well. So I encourage you to check out Spring Boot. Um, you don't really need to know everything about Spring Boot to get going with Grails 3.0. But if you kind of know some basics, it may help you when you see some certain conventions and, and especially the way the configuration in, in, in the application is done. It may make a little more sense. So it's worth looking into. I would definitely check it out. So that's Spring Boot. Um, the next big thing is Grails 3.0 got rid of Gantt, uh, the, the Gantt-based build system, in favor of Gradle. And if anybody's ever used Gradle, Gradle is just fantastic. And you'll see this right away when we get into um, some of the, the interactive mode and, and kind of running. Um, maybe it's uh, running a compile command or different commands. Just the, the advantages that Gradle gives you. Um, so it's really great, and if you've never heard of Gradle, 
I definitely suggest you take you take a look at this. Um, you can just start using Gradle right away without Grails. Um, just a normal Java or Groovy project, you can use Gradle in right away. So again, it's one of those things that you may not need to know everything about, but it is something good that you should know going into Grails 3.0 because the main build file is done in Gradle. So that's Gradle. Um, one of the newer things in 3.0 are application profiles. Um, and it gives us the notion of uh, kind of encap encapsulates a project. So we may have ideas for, for different types of project. Um, the default one that we build is, is basically a web profile. Um, and there are some different built-in profiles right out of the box, but th what this really allows others to do is build their own profiles and share them with the community. So hopefully in a later screencast, we'll, we'll take a look at profiles, um, where those profiles live um, as far as public ones, um, and kind of look around and see if anybody else is building profiles out there. Um, they redesigned the API based on traits. If you're not quite sure what traits are, it's a groovy thing. I would go ahead and take a look at it. But basically, it kind of replaces mix-ins, and it's just a, a better way of doing things. Um, and with that, um, they moved a lot of packages. So one of the big things with Grails 3.0 is um, a, a lot of the plugins that, that you're used to using in Grails 2.x applications aren't going to just work in 3.0. And this is one of the main reasons. A lot of, a lot of, the, a lot of the locations of different um, classes and packages have changed. Um, so that's one of the big things. Um, Grails 3.0 is probably you know, I don't, I don't know. I haven't deployed into production yet. It's probably production ready, but one of the big hangups is a lot of the plugins haven't been converted over yet. So until that point, until you're able to use all of the plugins that you normally use in a project, um, this may be more of a just check it out type of thing. Um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's kind of the current state of where we are. So. Um, just be aware of that, but also in here there is um, there is some information about upgrading plugins. So one thing we want to do is let's go ahead and jump. Um, if you go down here, there's an upgrading from Grails 2.x. So let's say you have an app that you want to take from 2.x to 3.0. There's some great information in here about that. Uh, one of the biggest things are are the project structures. Um, some things have changed there, and it lets you know hey, here was the old location, here's where it is now, or here's files that um, are not present in Grails 2, um, like the build.gradle was obviously not in 2, but here are some files that are present in 3. So it kind of tells you what moved around um, and where you might find it now. So if you're, for example, um, I know the data source uh, had moved. So if you're looking to kind of uh, configure your data source where we at here so right away um, that's no longer just its own file it was merged into the application.yaml file um, so this is a good place to start um, and then if you're a plugin author there's some great information here about how to upgrade your plugins so this, this is definitely something that we're going to need to start looking at um, we have some plugins at work that we definitely want to take a look at and see if we can you know how much kind of how much work it's going to take to, to kind of upgrade those to 3.0 um so that's kind of all there is for grails 3 again i would start looking through the documentation um, what we're going to do next uh, in the next screencast um, here are, here are a couple of things that i'd like to cover so we're going to look at installing Grails 3.0. Um, we're going to look at running the application. We'll take a look at interactive mode. Um, and just again, I, I said, you know, using Gradle, um, a lot of that is the speed of some of that stuff is really fast. So um, we'll take a look at that. Um, and then we'll also look at IntelliJ, uh, importing that project, your new Grails 3.0 project into IntelliJ. Um, a little bit through the directory structure, as I said, this uh, this get, um, upgrading guide has a lot of information of what changed, but we'll just go ahead and dive in and take a look at all of that for you. Um, and then just we'll go ahead and create some artifacts. Uh, if you ever hear, if you're new to Grails and you hear of artifacts, really what we're talking about is domain objects, controllers, services, that kind of thing. 
So we'll go in and create a couple just to kind of see the application um, at work and we'll go from there. Again, I, I hope to turn this into an entire series and I'd love your feedback. Please let me know below. Um, if anything you'd like to see specifically, I'd love to hear that too. So again, please subscribe and let me know what you guys thinks, uh, think. Thanks a lot.